Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship here at the First Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. I do have a couple of announcements to make. First, um, this coming Saturday is our flea market. Joanne, do you have anything you want to add to that? Sounds good. So next sat this coming Saturday, rain or shine. Also on Sunday is the crop walk. Lynn, do you want to add anything to that? Thank you. Also on um, October 30th is our 30 uh, is our 50 year member recognition Sunday and Heritage Sunday. So please come. It will be a very good time. Are there any other announcements that need to come before us at this time? See none, then let us begin our worship with our prelude. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you people. All you people. With shouts of joy, we celebrate the good news of God's love. Open your hearts to the warmth of God's redeeming love. God has poured such wonder into our lives. Come, let us worship God with hearts and souls and voices. Let us praise ring to the rafters and ascend to the heavens. Master Gardener, you revive us with our bodies when our bodies grow weak and when our spirits faint within us. 
Though we may be bound by our worries, your word is not chained. Help us build houses of joy and plant gardens of faith. As we pray for the welfare of our communities, help us bloom where we are planted, that your harvest of hope and love may be bountiful. In gratitude for your blessings, we pray, amen. Please rise as you are able and join in our opening hymn, number 41, O Worship the King, All Glorious Above. Dear friends, each day God invites us to live with our hearts wide open. And if we are honest with ourselves, we know that we live most days with our hearts closed shut. Together, let us pray our prayer of confession. Patient God, you know how easy it is for us to whine and complain bitterly about those things in our lives that are difficult. We focus on them as though they were the only things that ever happened to us, forgetting the many blessings that you have given to us and the opportunities you give us to serve you. We feel alienated you call us beloved. We feel lost, you seek us. We feel broken and battered, your love is a healing bomb. Forgive us when we forget those things. 
Help us to always look to you for our healing and to return thanks to you by praise and serving others in your name. For we offer this prayer of confession of our failures and gratitude for your blessings. Amen. Dear friends, turn again to the divine, for you are beloved of God. You have been forgiven and given many blessings. Rejoice in God's love for you. Thanks be to God. Before turning to scripture, let us pray. Let us present ourselves to God as disciples of Christ, that we may be approved by the Holy Spirit and share God's word of truth with the world. Amen. The first lesson comes from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1, and verses 4 through 7. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile, ex excuse me, into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage. That they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. The second lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's 
holy words. Yesterday, I was at a church conference. Some of those are, are, are really good, and some of those, sometimes you count the minutes until you can gracefully find an exit. But yesterday was the preacher and keynoter was, was a, a woman who calls herself a baptum methocostal. Who, who serves in a combined UCC and Presbyterian church. So you figure out all of that. But she had, had this message that I am still working on because it was that powerful. But there was a line, and, and yes, I need to confess right now, I am not preaching the sermon that I wrote. Because sometimes when you listen to Baptomethocostals, God puts something in your heart that says, don't preach what you wrote. And then you listen. Um, and so the, the line of scripture from Jeremiah that, that struck me this morning was, seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. And this hits with the whole theme of yesterday's conference. Is it well with your soul? Because I think if we honestly answer that question, we answer no. It is not well with our soul. I think that we all feel like we are exiles living in a time and a place that we don't know and it doesn't make sense to us. I can tell you one kernel of truth. No one knows where we are, and no one knows where we are going, especially in the church. Because we are in the beginning of a time of reformation. Things, we've been sensing this for some time. How we've always done it is really not working. We don't like to talk about that, we don't like to hear that, but we look around and we sort of know it. And COVID just made it stronger. COVID sort of pushed us into taking another step into this place of exile. And we have lots of questions, just like the Israelites as they found themselves in Babylon. Things seemed the same and weren't the same, all at the same time. And we wonder, what do we do? How do we st stay faithful? And almost more importantly, where is God and how do we find God? Now, in some ways, it is simple. God says, where you are, I am. Let's think about that. Where we are, God is. So if we're feeling confused and unsure and, and we really don't know what the next step should be, God is with us. And in some ways, that should give us the opportunity to take a breath. We don't have to figure it out all on our own, nor do we have to figure it out right now. God is with us. If we open our hearts and allow God's Spirit to be with us 
in this time of exile, we will find the beginning of the path because God will show it to us in God's time, not ours. And we all know this. And if you're like me, this is the part that drives you crazy about God because it's in God's time, not our time. Because I want to know when, I want to have a plan, I want to make the plan, I want to follow it, I want the plan B in case plan A doesn't happen, and I want to know what I'm going to do. God looks at me, I'm sure rolls God's eyes, sighs and laughs and says, sure Marie, you go make every single plan you want. And then God does what God wants, and all my plans go poof. You would think at some time I would stop making plans, but I don't. So Jeremiah talks to the Is Israelites who desperately want to get back home. That's what they want. That's what the false prophet Shemaiah was promising them. I'm going to... God is going to bring you back really soon, so don't do anything here. Just be ready to go back home. And Jeremiah writes to the people to remind them that's not happening anytime soon. You need to stay here, and you need to live, and you need to live faithfully, and you need to find ways to make roots and make meaning for yourselves and your families where you are in exile, even though it feels weird and hard and strange. God will be with you in exile. And that's what we're doing. We as the church are finding a whole new way. We have figured out how to go on Facebook Live. And that's really great. And we are doing a ministry that is new and important and meaningful to so many people. How does it really fit in with what we do here? We don't know yet, but we're doing it knowing that God is leading us. And we're trying to figure out how we do church in a whole world that is changing. And that's okay. Because we can look back at our ancestors in faith. About 500 years ago, there was the last Reformation. We look back on it now and see how every single thing in about a, a hundred year period may, led to one thing to another and makes sense. I can assure you they didn't see it that way. And so we are in this same time and God calls to us be faithful, keep moving forward, I will be with you. Enjoy your time here in this new place because you still have each other and my love. So let us go forth as exiles in this land that doesn't always make sense, knowing that God is with us, helping us to create the new vision that God has already dreamed. Amen. I invite those who are able to rise as we affirm our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please join in our next hymn, number 716, God whose giving knows no ending. Please be seated. At this time, I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. Yes, Matthew. Wow.
Wow. And the, faith, and the power faith couple of this congregation. Yes, Fran. Yes. For those of you who, who couldn't hear Fran, Don Whitaker passed away last evening at the age of almost 93. He was 93. He just turned a few weeks ago. We also keep the family and friends of Bill Balog in our hearts and minds. Um, we celebrated Bill here on Tuesday with a beautiful yet rainy send-off. But, and Karen, it's good to see you and your family back in your pew where you belong. Are there any, uh, yes, Amy. Oh, yes. It's always hard when the little ones. Huh? Margaret, sorry. Thank you for your prayers for Katie and Heather and Heather's mom, Barbara. And can you ramp them up? Uh, Barbara Bush has surgery later this month. Um, there's cancer in one's nose. There's just, if we could ramp it up, that would be great. And thank you for the ones you've given so far. Thank you, Margaret. So, so we are continuing to pray for Barbara, who is having surgery and has cancer and a lot of other things. Are there, yes? Ryan, yes, as I'm trying to hear <laughs> through, as, as the heat just sort of turned on. So Ryan had surgery and, and is having a hard time. Isn't it always the case that it's more involved than they think? But yes, so we, we will keep Ryan in our thoughts and prayers that his healing from surgery continues to improve. Are there any others? With all that is on our hearts and our minds, let us turn to God in prayer, first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of the ways in which you speak to us and lead us. Remind us, holy God, that we don't have to have all the answers right now. All we need is faith and trust in you. Help us to remember that. For it is so simple and sometimes so hard. Because we want to make things sometimes more complicated than they have to be. We want to plan. We want to feel like we are in control and in charge. Forgetting that you are the one who is in control and in charge. Soothe our spirits to let your grace come into our lives so that we may lead holy and faithful lives. Holy God, we thank you that we know we can turn to you 
with all that is on our hearts and our minds. And so today we pray for all those people who grieve and mourn. We ask that they know your peace. We pray for all those people who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence come to them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, Holy God, with all those people who rejoice and celebrate this day, knowing that those celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray, Holy God, for all of those people who wrestle with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small. We ask that they know your hope. We pray, Holy God, for all of those people who give of themselves freely in so many different ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, Holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred and that your peace and your justice and your mercy come to all corners of our world. Lead us and guide us, Holy God, to be your faithful people here and now, trusting you every step of our lives. We pray this prayer and all our prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let our offering today be our thanksgiving for the mercy and goodness and ever faithfulness of God. The ushers come forward.
Please join me in our prayer of dedication. In a world of goodness and struggle, we are grateful for your blessings, O God. As we seek to endure life's struggles, teach us to trust that you are always there. May these gifts be sent into our community and into the world around us, that others may claim the hope of your presence. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 724. O oh Jesus, I have promised. 